to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today's tip is basically about the differences between gouache and watercolor. A lot of people kind of get a little intimidated and scared off by gouache. And a lot of people don't even know, really know what it is. Um, so I'm here to clarify and show you some really, really cool features and differences um, between gouache and watercolor. As you may know, gouache and watercolor share the similarity of that they are basically a combination of pigment and gum arabic as the binder. So the gum arabic is what allows you to um, pick up the color and allows it to um, adhere to the surface that you're applying it to. So that's where the similarities are. But the differences are that gouache is formulated with a series of pigments that are opaque versus watercolor that are transparent. Now, why would you want that? Well, um, gouache has some really unique characteristics that are wonderful in certain scenarios. Um, for instance, for a long time, gouache has been known as basically like a designer's material because the opacity and the thickness of gouache allows you to lay color onto itself um, with great coverage no lap lines, no trouble like blending. You know, you get a thick, rich punch of color. It dries flat. It's easy to photograph. So in the days before computer generated like illustrations and logos, or even if you're doing uh, illustration that's hand done, gouache is a really fantastic tool to get like really strong immediate color and like guaranteed coverage. Now, some people find that a little intimidating. However, I think that it's fascinating and a wonderful way to, a wonderful accompany, accompaniment to your existing watercolor lineup. They can be used back and forth. And gouache does have some characteristics that are similar to watercolor. Like a lot of people think that like once gouache has dried, that it's like cement and you'll never get it back up again. And I'm here to show you that that's absolutely not the case. So um, got a few little cool things to show you here. Actually, I did like a little pre setup of a gouache versus a watercolor on the exact same surface. So what I did here was, um, this is just um, a coloring book page from Pepin Press that I removed from the book. Um, and Pepin Press is wonderful because this is actual watercolor paper, which is conducive to what we're doing here. But in order to keep all things equal and you can see as easily as possible what we're trying to do. So this half of this page is actually executed with all Windsor Newton gouache. Um, we have colors like indigo and cypress green and then uh, linden green here and also some lemon yellow and um, permanent rose. The interesting thing about gouache is there aren't necessarily all the time direct, you know, conversions to watercolor because you are dealing with some different pigments in gouache because they're opaque versus the transparent pigments that are in watercolor. So some of our colors are different here on our watercolor one, but we do have like indigo and we have permanent rose and lemon yellow and stuff like that, but not all of them are exactly the same. But what we did is to kind of show you like what these colors look like, like the power punch that they have directly out of the tube and like their full strength versus actually taking them down into like a 50% wash. Like some people think that that's the only way that gouache can be used as like full strength out of the tube, like super thick and blah, blah, blah. Super thick doesn't really, really work because like you can't do like an impasto application with gouache because it, uh, the binder won't hold and you know, to be that thick, you actually will get some cracking. So you had to have a wet brush in order to get it to move around a little bit. But what we did was like full strength here and then like a watercolor style wash with it here. And you can see that you get a whole lot of variation in these colors uh, and a whole lot of uh, interesting variety that you can do. Now over here on the watercolor side, we have a whole bunch of colors that we were able to duplicate. So indigo and permanent rose and sour lemon and those kinds of things were direct correlations that we could use in watercolor. Some of them were not. But again, what we did was like pretty much directly out of the tube, just a little wet brush and applied them on here. And then like a watercolor wash so you can see the two of them together. So you can see that you can get all kinds of dynamic variety with those two and see how well those uh, kinds of things work together. 
another one of the things that kind of like weirds people out about gouache is that it can people sometimes think that you can't blend it and that you can't rework it once it's dry so i've actually applied a little bit of this cypress green which i really like it's so pretty and i've got it on the surface and i've just got a wet brush here and i'm actually going to take this this is already dried um, we put it on there a while ago and I'm going to show you how easy it is to pick it up. This isn't with a scrubber. This is just with a um, synthetic sable brush and you can see how we can reactivate color and move it around just like you would with watercolor. Okay. And see how pretty that is. We can soften it. We can do all kinds of different stuff. Now, one thing I can tell you is that a lot of the colors um, that are formulated in gouache lines, generally the pigments aren't as conducive to completely lifting color up. It could be a little bit of a problem. So um, you're not gonna get generally back to the white, white, white of the page, but um, you can reactivate them and move them around pretty easily. Um, then we've got a little bit of indigo here and we're just gonna wet this. I'm gonna show you how powerful the coverage is um, with gouache one color over the next. So we're going to go directly over this color. And can you see that there's absolute, like, complete coverage? You're not getting any bleed through of the cypress green underneath there. And we can play around and push the limits of this dark, dark, indigo over the cypress and you get really really nice dynamic coverage and when this dries it'll be completely flat and you won't have to worry about them bleeding into each other that's one of the really fantastic wonderful things about gouache that makes it kind of different from watercolor with watercolor depending on the color you would have you know a little bit of show through um, and a little bit of uh, the colors working with each other, which is one of the, the delicate balances and fascinating parts of watercolor. Um, but gouache also has this amazing um, capability where it functions a little bit like acrylic would, where you, you know, put a color on top of the other, it masks out the thing below. So for illustrators, graphic designers, textile designers, landscape architects, sometimes when they're doing renderings, will really, really enjoy the way that this works versus just watercolor. So if you haven't taken a look at gouache, it is just the happy little cousin of watercolor. Um, check them out. They are fascinating, they are fun, they're just a whole amazing set of characteristics if you haven't tried them, and we're sure that you will enjoy.